start of the season. Well, and what stands out about him is one walk. 15 innings, one walk. Command, got a good arm, throw a good breaking ball. He doesn't walk, guys, which is good. Auburn does not need to give up free bases against this kind of offense. Friday night in the SEC doesn't get much better than this as we see Christian Moore foul the first pitch off down the line. It's nothing and one. And there you see the third baseman for Auburn, Eric Guerrero. He has been out with an ACL injury, suffered in October, and the first swing of the game goes to him playing third base. He played on Tuesday or Wednesday night uh, in a non-conference game against UAB, but there he is now first. It always finds you, J.J., yep. the first swing of the game goes right to him, foul ball. Just the second career start for the true freshman, Eric Guarva. One thing you notice, that, folks, as you're watching at home, this Tennessee lineup is huge. They apparently eat lots of chicken and lift lots of weights, protein, because they are big. This is the leadoff guy right here uh, with Christian Moore. And then on deck is six foot three, 240 pounds, uh, Blake Burke. So they are a big physical team. Christian Moore plays second base for the Vols. Nothing in one to count. He lines this one into left field all the way to the wall. Could be extra bases. A leadoff double here for Christian Moore. And just like that, the Tennessee offense gets started. As we take a look at the Auburn starting pitcher here today, again, we're talking about Dylan Watts, the first career start for the sophomore. Yeah, he's been really good in the bullpen. Like we said, one walk. So 13 innings, one walk, 15 strikeouts. He's kind of earned it. He, you know, I don't think he was even mentioned in the January conversations we have with Coach Thompson. He's just gotten his opportunities, and he's just stepped it up. And now here he is starting in a really big ball game for Auburn. They're one and eight. It's not over, it's not too late, but they do need a good performance from him tonight. Starting pitching has been the biggest issue this season for Auburn, trying to figure out a group that works as this pitch inside to Blake Burke gets away from Ike Irish and a runner all the way up to third now. Well, if people are going to pitch, I mean, there's nobody to pitch around in the lineup. That's the thing is, who do you, who do you isolate as the guy not to let beat you? There's not one, but Burke is definitely a guy. He's the top of the cream right now. There's a bunch of them, but he's... He's hit balls off speed out, oppo, breaking balls down and in. He can hit anything. Now, Auburn here is trying to get an out. You'll, you'll sacrifice the run if you can get an out and get him out of home plate. Runner at third. Blake Burke drives one. Deep to center. It's going to get down for a base knock as Moore will score. An RBI double for Blake Burke. Tennessee strikes first early here in the first inning. Now, what a pretty swing. That was a breaking ball in the middle. You'll see this pitch is missing the middle. This is an easy, re relaxed swing. Actually, a fastball right down the middle. And guys like that, Blake Burke, they don't miss those. And Tennessee right off the bat, three pitches, two doubles, one nothing. Falls on top here in the top of the first inning. See Peyton Watts on the first base side of the rubber. That would indicate to me, at least up here, a little sink on the ball. Trying to run the ball down and in. See if he can get one down, let's get a ground ball. Robin Villeneuve in the batter's box for Tennessee. The junior from Canada this season with a 323 batting average, five home runs on the year. Yeah, and Tennessee's got him from everywhere. JJ, you mentioned Canada. Burke from California. Now you have a guy from Canada. So it's become really international recruiting. Auburn has some players from out of the country. Joseph Gonzalez was from uh, Puerto Rico. And Guevara is from Panama. So SEC baseball has really become, you know, I guess you say international. It's not all the way across the ocean, but not just the continental United States anymore. 1-1 one, one pitch fouled at the plate by Villeneuve, and it's 1-2. Dylan Watts looking for the first out of the inning, and that could do a lot for the sophomore. Yeah, I've been in that dugout. We were 0-9 our first year, 2001 maybe, and, just a bad feeling. We're playing Tennessee, and they come right out and go double single, and we got out of it and won a bunch of games and qualified for the tournament. If you're in that dugout in Auburn, you're kind of sitting there going, all right, we need an out here, just something positive, and don't let this thing get out of control early. Pitch inside. Villeneuve ducks out of the way. It's two balls and two strikes. 93 there from Watt. So very good stuff, good arm, good life. It's different. You know, he's been coming out of the bullpen. This is different. You're on the stage here when you're a starter on a Friday night with this kind of crowd and this kind of an offensive team. So different emotions for him. Swing and a miss, big strikeout for Dylan Watts as Villeneuve whiffs at it. And that's a much needed first down of the inning. Yeah, it sure is. A good pitch, 93, watch him elevate. Fastball up above the hands, that's on purpose, that's trained. 
Great job. Coach Tiford and his guys working down there, and that's a good pitch, good spot. It just doesn't get any easier. This is one of the guys we highlight, talked about uh, tears a lot before the game started, hitting fourth, hitting double-digit home runs. So it doesn't get any easier for Peyton Watts. Left-handed swinging right fielder for Tennessee. Blasts one to right field. That ball's not coming back. My goodness. The power from tears makes it a 3-0 ball game here in the first inning. They do remember, that's the first inning. These guys haven't faced Peyton Watts. You know, you'd like to get into the groove a little bit as a hitter. Right there is a breaking ball. It sat right in the middle of the plate. And again, against this kind of a lineup, those mistakes don't get missed. Watch this pitch, just kind of sit out there. You know, it's not a bad breaking ball. It's 0-0 count. So that's what you're supposed to do as a pitcher. You throw your breaking ball early in the count, get ahead. But to Tears' credit, he was looking for something middling. He got it. First pitch, wasting no time swinging there for Tears. 425 the distance on that big blast from the ball's right fielder. So if you're Peyton Watts, you got to stay in control of your emotions. It's 3 0. It's the first inning. Auburn can hit. We highlighted McMurray. We highlighted Ike Irish. They can hit. But if you're Peyton Watts, you just want to keep Dylan Watts. I'm sorry. You just want to keep this thing at three in the first inning. Give the offense a chance. Good fastball. Look, he's throwing strikes. We highlighted that. One wall. Tennessee's hit the ball. That's their job. Tennessee this season has yet to lose when scoring first and scoring in the first inning. 13-0 on the year. 0-2 to Dryling. Started to check his swing, held up, and it's ball one. Second mishandle of the first inning by Ike Irish behind the plate. And he's done a great job. There was some question coming in. He played a lot of outfield last year, DH. Could he be an everyday catcher? And he's proven he can. Not only is he hitting, he's done a really good job back there catching and throwing, working with his staff. And it hasn't been easy because they've had some long ball games and some pitching that hasn't been great. Good fastball there. Second strikeout of the inning for Dylan Watts as Dryling goes down. Two down here in the first. So if you're Dylan Watts, you're thinking, dang, I've got two good strikeouts and two good pitches. I threw a pretty good breaking ball to tears, and he just got on it and hit it out. And then he threw a ball over the middle uh, to the first, second bout of the game with, with Berg. Other than that, I mean, two mistakes. That's just how good this Tennessee offense is. This is a good pitching performance so far with good stuff. They're just that good. They're going to be tough to deal with. If, they, if Tennessee can pitch, and Coach Abatello and I, we talked about it the other day, if they can pitch and be consistent, they're going to be a team that's going to be hard to deal with come June time. Good breaking ball there for strike one. Dean Curley, the freshman shortstop. Another California native on this Tennessee baseball team takes strike one. Coach Vitello is from out there. He coached out there and has a great history and probably a lot of contacts and getting some good players out of the state of California. And why not? Why wouldn't you want to come to the big UT right there on the river, Knoxville, and play in front of big crowds and go to football games with 100,000 people and it's a great place to go to school and play and baseball. get to compete in the SEC at the upper echelon of the SEC one and one to Curley Watts misses two and one fourth SEC weekend of the season for both of these teams and Tennessee strikes first here early against Auburn as we see Curley now ahead in the count three balls and a strike say I'd look for a 3-1 breaking ball here I don't think you can lay fastballs in Curley's having a great year as well good numbers I think if you're watch you got to mix a little bit and take some risks with the fastball count breaking ball up the middle how about a base hit for the Tennessee shortstop Dean Curley singles J.J., hitting is not this easy. I mean, it's just not. Hitting is the hardest thing to do in any sport, but this Tennessee offense, right off the bat, first six guys making it look like it's just sitting on a tee. So Dalton Barco, the third baseman, a sophomore for Tennessee with the 375 batting average. You think you're getting a break because the home run numbers go down, but the batting average goes yeah. up. Throw over to first, and we'll see Curley dive back in. Fargo with 48 at bat, so not as many. I don't know if he's a guy that's kind of earned his way up or has played in a kind of support role or not, but uh, great numbers and having a great year as well. Pitch low and inside for ball one. 
You just don't want you don't want Dylan Watts to panic. You want him to relax. He's got great command. The stuff is good. You just want him, if you're in that Auburn dugout, just get out of this first inning, give us a chance. Let's settle in a little bit. Let's see if we can get a few innings out of him. If you're the Auburn coaching staff, that's, that's kind of your thinking process. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. Hey, it's an electric fastball. Well, that ball's got some life at 93. It's a good pitch up and out there. And if you're the Tennessee coaching staff, you got to be pleased with the start your offense yeah. picked up here on the road. Yeah. Hard to win on the road in this league. I don't know if coaches are ever relaxed, satisfied, <laughs> but if you're Coach Vitello, you're sure feeling pretty good about this off the bat, 3 0. 2 1 on a pitch inside. Great crowd, great weather here on the plains in Auburn as it is across the SEC. It's it's the it's the teeth of the SEC season. Huge crowds, good baseball, a lot to play for. 2-1 coming, and there's a strike. It's an even count now at two balls and two strikes. Okay, let's see if Dylan Watts can throw the breaking ball here. 2-2 two -two count. He's thrown him four fastballs, so you kind of feel like you need to mix a little bit. Maybe let's see what they do. Got a really good slider. Threw one to tier. He just threw it right in the swing plane. Can he mix one down? 2-2, two -two and it's fouled back. Maybe the fastball up. Great job right there by Bargo. Just get a good pitch. It's out of, out of the zone and ruin it. Slap it out of there, foul it off, lift, and see another pitch. Two two, swing and a miss. Third strikeout of the inning. For it's a sinker slider look, and left-handed hitters have had a better look against them than right-handed hitters have. Really unique. 89 miles an hour. You're not going to see 95. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm a 1980s guy. Coach Baird, sink it. Throw the slider. This guy is kind of a throwback the way he pitches. There's a strike. It's nothing in two quickly from Causey. 17 miles an hour difference, JJ. Fastball 89. Frisbee like an EFIS, like a, like a Bugs Bunny cartoon breaker ball there on the outer half of the plate. Really good pitch. But he can put guys away with a hard slider, so look forward here. And looking for Mason Manners to set the table. So Manners takes one outside for ball one. I'm sure these guys face each other in the scrimmages last year at Jackson State. Now here they are in the SEC. Maybe talk a little bit on social media throughout the week. Mainers fouls this one off. Yeah, Mason Mainers can do a little bit of everything. He's got six home runs. He's shown the ability. He can really run. He's had some drag bunts. He can, he can drop a bunt down the third base line. So he's a quality leadoff guy for Auburn. And if you're, you know, if you're Faith or Causey, he's going to see the ball better. Mainers is going to see the ball better than a right-handed hitter because of the lower arm slot. So it's advantage Mainers at the moment. Teammates turned opponents as Causey gets his former teammate to strike out swinging. Chased after one, and Mainers is retired for it, out number one. It's really fun to watch, AJ. Watch this pitch. Watch how far outside the strike zone it is. I mean, that's a ball, and all of a sudden, Mainers knows it. He's got to go out there and try to get a piece of it. That's a nasty breaking ball at 72 miles an hour. This is awesome. You're so used to seeing 95, you know, on Friday night, and here's a guy doing things different with great success. Cooper Weiss is the shortstop for Auburn, and he takes one low for ball one. Normally you don't see 90 miles an hour from guys with lower slots like this. I don't know if a coach moved him down or if he's been this way or not, but you see power coming out of this sinker, and there it is, just ugly. Right-handed hitters are about 157 against him. That's all you need to know is because of that sink. One ones up and inside for ball two. Cooper Weiss ahead in the count. It's not an 85 mile an hour slider. It's 72 to 74. Like we told you, he's almost 50 strikeouts, about 12 above the innings. Weiss fouls another one off. Two balls, two strikes. We are in such a generation of how hard do you throw. And he's throwing hard, but he's sinking the ball, moving it around. And so if you're if you're Gabe Gross in the Auburn third base box, what do you tell your hitters? How do you approach a guy like this? You've got to see it up. If it's not up and you swing at it, it's going to be a ground ball. 2-2. Two -two. And that one's outside of the strike zone. The count's now full. Something a little harder there. I don't he's maybe a little cutter. That was 79. So we've seen a three-speed mix. Fastball around 90. 
Slurve, kind of frisbee curveball around 72, and then that right there with a late break on it, 79. Still incredibly early in tonight's game, but Auburn looking to get those three runs back as Causey gets back-to-back -back strikeouts to get our game started. It's a right-on-right changeup. Watch this thing explode. That's what it is. It's a right-handed changeup to a right-handed hitter. Keep it away from him so it doesn't miss down and in. You get a lot of outs. This may not be fun for the hitters, but it's fun for me. <laughs> this is great to watch a guy do this out there pitching. So if you're not a power guy, if you can sink it, change speed, you pitch a long time. One of the premier players in the SEC, Ike Irish, second in the league and runs driven in. Yeah, he really is. He hits everything. He hits doubles. He goes opposite field. He battles with two strikes. He is a complete hitter. And really his learning curve, J.J., he's only got uh, 15 strikeouts in the season. You know, out of 113 at bats, pretty good numbers. There hasn't been much of a learning curve for Ike Irish. Driven deep, Ike Irish to right field, into the bullpen. A solo home run for the Auburn catcher. And what, what you're going to see is that little Frisbee slider. The problem is it's a left-handed hitter. Same thing that uh, Fears Tears did for Tennessee. He got a breaking ball. Watch this. Down and in. Bad spot to miss. That's the same thing that Auburn did. Watts did against Tears. And you what see what happens. What a swing. So, yeah, he's, it's, it's as pretty as it gets. And Ike Irish trying to fire his teammates up. Cooper McMurray takes one outside for ball one. We highlighted the wrecking ball that Irish and McMurray have been the last seven, six games. Six, that's been eight games that they have just home runs, RBIs. They've kept this Auburn team in ball games. Tell you what, Mark, both of these teams have a lot of personality when you look up oh, yeah. and down their lineups. No question. They are going to have fun competing against one another this entire weekend. Causey with a change up there, so a different look. He didn't throw the bacon ball. If you miss in again to McMurray, it'll be three to two. So a better job there of throwing the pitch going away from McMurray. Now, what does he do with two strikes? McMurray hits one deep down the left field line, but just foul. If you're a pitcher or a pitching coach, your throat's in your stomach right now when these guys come to home play. Golly. Really not holes you can pitch to on these guys, and McMurray's one of those guys, you know, I don't know, I don't know what you do. You hope he hits it at somebody. Low and inside there from Causey, and it's two balls and two strikes. Causey's gone away from the slider. He's got two change-ups now behind the fastball to McMurray. Tennessee leading 3-1 here in the bottom of the first with two outs and a hard hit ball by McMurray. That's foul. Worked the game last year with Cooper McMurray. Were you and I together when he hit the foul pole on one home oh, run, yeah. then he hit the opposite field? I've never seen a guy do that. He went oppo on one at bat, hit the fair pole, foul pole, then he pulled it, and he hit the fair pole down the right field line. He hit 14 home runs last year as a transfer from Kansas. And again, off to a great start this year. Two twos low, and the count's now full. Because he's got eight walks in 35 innings. He's going to be in the strike zone. Fouled off at the plate by McMurray. So that one got a piece of his foot. Try to walk it off. Yeah, that was the slider, and he ruined it. You know, I, on the phone with Coach Vitello, I was really expecting more of a late, nasty slide. This thing is just a Frisbee, but it's effective. And so I really want folks at home just to pay attention because we live in this power, power, power world, and, and he's got a great arm, but he's just doing it with so many different looks. McMurray, a hard shot to second, hits off Christian Moore, and Cooper McMurray's going to be safe. Got to be a base hit, I would think. That was an absolute rocket. That ball was smoked. Short hop, tried to go in, and... Again, down and in is a bad spot to miss, and an absolute rocket right at there. Mark, I don't envy Christian Moore no. right there. No, he did the best he could. He tried to get to the line drive before it bounced. Just get there on time. Scored a single. It's the second hit of the inning for Auburn. See if we can get a good look here of Causey's mechanics. You see where he is in the pitching rubber, all the way over on the first base side. 
So why, much like Watts for Auburn, why would you be on the first base side? The ball's got sink, right? So they're trying to open it as he faces Bobby Pierce. You see Bobby there from Scottsdale, been here for four years, and been a very good player. And it's another right-handed bat now for this Auburn lineup after A.J. Causey faced back-to-back -back lefties. And you see what they did, right? Two balls just obliterated, and now a lot more success for him against the righties. Hard hit ball by Bobby Pierce. That's out in the left field. Back-to-back -back singles for Auburn. Bobby Pierce got a sinker up. Sinker down, you hit a ground ball. A good hitter, a veteran here like Bobby Pierce. When you get a two-seam fastball up, watch this now, it's up in the zone. You see right there, about belt high. And he's able to get the barrel to it, smoke it. So that's got runners at first and second with two outs here in the bottom of the first. And a big left-handed bat, and Christian Hall steps into the left-handed batter's box here for Auburn. Transfer from UAB, playing in his first season with the Auburn Tigers. How often do we say that, right? Transfer, transfer, transfer. A one pitch. Outside, ball one. And this is what I meant when we talk about Dylan Watts in the first inning, the home run double, is Auburn can hit. So if, if the pitching staff at Auburn, just if they can keep this game close, give these hitters a chance for, for Auburn to work in the game a little bit, they'll be fine. You just can't get out of it too early, and Auburn comes right back offensively battling with some good at-bats. 1-1 one, one misses inside. It's now 2-1 and one to Christian Hall. Auburn a run home already in the first on an Ike Irish home run. And Christian Hall with the base hit right back up the middle. Auburn's going to wave Cooper McMurray to the plate. Look at the big man around the third base bag in the score. It's an RBI for Christian Hall. Pretty cool. He got a fastball middle on a 2-1 count. Stayed with it. Got it up. Left-handed hitters having great success this year against Crosby. Another one there. Watch his pitch in the middle. What a good swing. Big, strong guy. Big, strong swing. I'll tell you what, if you like pitching, this might not be the series for you. Don't leave us. Stay with us. But if you're a pitching expert, you might not like this weekend too much. Three-two, the score here in the bottom of the first. As the Tigers down today, Mark, it's just his fourth start of the season. Cade Blue takes one outside. Auburn High School freshman. I've seen him swing at three pitches this year for me. Home run and a double, a pitch hit. And he's out there because of the left-handed success against Causey. Look at the smile around the third base back. Offense early here in this one. JJ, we came down the first inning. Golly, bombs away. There he is, got a fastball first pitch and hit it. I think he hit it further than Tears hit his. Unbelievable swing in just his fourth start of the year. Cade Ballou touches them all. And just like that, it's Auburn with a 5-3 lead. Good gracious, wow. golly. We've had three home runs and two doubles in, in one and two thirds innings. Eric Guevara, starting third baseman, a freshman for Auburn, quickly down, nothing and two. Plenty of time throughout today's game to tell you more about his story. But Causey with a quick three pitch strike. He came into the, to the broadcast today and here we go. Hard hit ball to right field. First pitch swinging this time from Tennessee's Hunter Inslee. But into the mitt of Bobby Pierce out there and right, and there's one down in the second. And I have to imagine that dugout, Coach T for the pitching coach at Auburn, walked over to Dylan Watson, hey, we're going to be fine. We can hit. Just get us out. And there you go. One pitch, one out. That's a good start to the second inning. Stay calm. He looks like he's fine. I mean, he made good pitches last inning. Tennessee just hit him. So it's not a command issue. It's just trying to make a little better spot, maybe location pitch. Cal Stark is the catcher for Tennessee. Stands in the right-handed batter's box. A senior from Knoxville, a Farragut High School product. 
great high school. They were in Hoover this past week playing in a spring break tournament. Man, they are, I think I heard there was nine Division I commits in the field at one time for Farragut. The Admiral product with a single out to right field. One out in the top of the second. And the bad news about that is it flips the lineup. Here we go again. We're not even in the second inning deep yet. Here comes the top of the Tennessee order again. And we'll see Christian Moore step back into the batter's box. And neither team wants to go to their bullpen in the second inning, third inning on Friday night. You're just too long of a weekend. You don't want to burn your guys up. So both coaching staffs are just hopeful that these starting pitchers can hang in there, give them a few innings, keep the game close, save the bullpen. Well, we saw Christian Moore pick up a double to lead our game off, and he's already batting for the second time here today, to your point, Mark, with Tennessee very quickly yeah. turning the lineup back over to the top. We may say that a lot this weekend. A blast to center field as Christian Moore has tied the game at five. Holy cow. Do you like home runs? Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Wow. 11th home run of the season for the Tennessee second baseman Christian Moore, and we are tied at five. Let me put this into context for you folks at home. A 93 mile an hour fastball is giving you, see it right in the middle, up a little bit, but just not up enough. But 93 miles an hour is less than a half a second reaction time. And these guys are hitting them like they're sitting still. I'm out here by Coach Teacher and going to the bullpen. I heard Coach Thompson talking how to make sure that he pitches. Now, Burke's coming up, J.J. And Burke, we, we got a little a show for you here on what he does with everything, in, up, down, hard, and soft. You're going to see a change up first, down the way. Watch what he does here now. This is not easy to do. That's an off-speed pitch. That's how strong he is. Half effort, it goes opposite field. Now we get the breaking ball down and in. He's fooled. He golfs it out. And then you see a fastball up in the middle, and he just absolutely murders it out of the park. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I have no answer. Take a look at that. Blake Burke can hit anything. That's what that tells me. Yep. And you see the slider being the number one home run pitch because they're trying to, to fool him and trick him, and he hasn't let them do it. So see if Myers can work away and get ahead. We're tied at five here in the second inning, and Carson Myers throws the first pitch strike. I like this move by Coach Tiefer for Auburn to come in with a lefty that can do some things, three different pitches, command it, sink it, and pitch a little bit. Two fastballs right off the bat. Every hitter has a hole, but you got to get there. That's the that's the challenge. Okay, we think we can get this guy out here, but making that pitch and executing is the hardest part. One and one to Burke misses outside for ball two. Well, the score's basically nothing, nothing, right? We've had great games so far. We've had ten runs scored. Wow. Two one hit to right field. Bobby Pierce will cut it off, but it's a, a single here for Blake Burke in the first batter that Carson Myers faces. It's a 240 pound number two hitter. They're usually about five foot seven, and they can bunt. You see the swing, <laughs> he missed down and in, and it's just batting practice right now for Blake Burke. He get, he's gotten two pitches down in, in his zone, and he's just smoked them both. Burke doubled back in the first and scored a run on the Kavaris Tears home run, and now he has singled. Robin Villeneuve, the batter, who struck out back in the first inning. Good first pitch breaking ball there by Myers, getting ahead of the count. If you're, if you're Myers, you just, with a right-handed hitter, with Villeneuve in, if you can just sink one, get your double play, you're out of the inning. 0-1. Cranked down the left field line, but foul. The people up in the parking garage got a souvenir. Oh, they missed <laughs> it. They had it and dropped it. Not very often you get that chance, guys. Let's go. Y'all got to catch that one. So you're ahead on two breaking balls, 0-2 oh if you're uh, Carson Myers. What pitch can you throw? You don't have to have a strikeout. You just want weak contact and get it out. One out here in the top of the second. 0-2 oh is fouled back. 90 mile an hour fastball up a little bit. Good pitch and a great job there by the Wave to mess it up.
No balls, two strikes. 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss, and Villeneuve is down on strikes for the second time today. It's a good breaking ball. He missed a little bit in the middle, but he took enough off of it. It acted more like an off speed pitch and a really late breaking breaking ball, but it worked. And if you look down the Tennessee lineup now, 19 strikeouts, 19, 25, 20. They do strike out. So if you can get ahead of them and make pitches, pitch to your strength, you can strike these guys out. They hit a lot of home runs. It's okay if you strike out as an offense if you hit a bunch of home runs, and they do. Tears the batter, and he swings at the first pitch. Nearly takes out Blake Burke, who's going to take off towards third. He'll be in there safely. It's a single for Kavaris Tears. That ball nearly hit him off the bat, Mark. Third base coach Josh Erlander was holding Burke up, and he kept right on going, trucking the big guy, trucking him. He's seen two pitches in this game, and he's got a single and a home run. Bobby Pierce with a great arm, and I thought for a second he had a chance, but Burke did a good job of hustling and getting there, and he pushed the, the, the first to third. Um, that's great base running by him. So we've got runners at the corners for Tennessee. Two outs here in the inning. Dylan Dryling the batter, and this one misses low and away. You try to keep things in perspective if you're a pitcher, no matter if it's Causey or if it's Myers, you try to keep it in perspective. I have two outs. I just got to make one good pitch. It, 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 although it may seem bad, it's not. If you make one good pitch, you get out of this. 1-0. Ball two. Pretty good pitch there. Mike Ivers done a good job behind the plate. Tears is a good runner. See if Tennessee pushes it here with the first and third. Not much of a lead. And they don't have to run. You look up and down their stats, JJ, they don't have to run. They've stolen 21 of 27 in, what we got, 29 games. So they don't have to run. When you hit home runs like they do, you don't want to run. You yeah. don't want to get thrown out when you hit the ball of the park, one to nine in the order. We'll see time called here by the second base umpire, Jeff Wright. And Carson Myers gets a new baseball. Dylan Dryling from Hayes, Kansas. We've seen Canada. We've seen California in the Tennessee lineup. Kansas, across the country. Ball four. It's a four-pitch walk to Dryling to load the bases. Something you don't see very often in this transfer portal war we live in is freshmen in the lineup. And here you see Corley coming to the play. This guy's a good player. Starting at shortstop for the University of Tennessee as a freshman. That's, that's saying something. The average age in Division I college baseball, J.J., is 21.7 years old. That's never been said before. And this kid right here, the freshman, has earned it. He's starting right at the middle. Strike one to Dean Curley. Bases loaded, two outs. And this one's found back. Got two good breaking balls. So Myers is pitching. Walk the last guy, four straight. Well, okay. Come right back and throw strikes and get in the zone. Just do what you can handle. Look, look forward for the next opportunity. This is it for him. Now, can Curly battle with two strikes? Or will Kip Carson Myers make the best pitch? Looking to get out of the second inning. Carson Myers throws one low in the dirt. And Ike Irish kept it in front of him. That's important here in this bases loaded situation. It is, and it's exactly where you want to throw it. He tightened that break of up a little bit. He buried it, threw it right at the back foot. A really good take by Curley, a great block by Irish, and a good pitch by Myers. Everybody did their job, and we live to see another pitch. Curley wins that battle because he didn't chase a good pitch. One two pitch. Hit foul and out of play. Myers, you and I have talked. He's got, he started, so he has the potential now to go some innings and go. 80 or 90 pitches and give Auburn some, some depth in this game. Bases loaded for Tennessee here in the top of the second. We've seen a lot of offense so far tonight. And we see this one miss outside for ball two. What pitchers, a lot of times pitchers, and we've seen a little bit here with Carson Myers. He got ahead 0-2. Then tried to throw a perfect breaking ball. It was a good pitch. And that time he overthrows a fastball. So trying to make the perfect pitch with two strikes. Just 
Be who you are. Don't change anything. Just make a pitch, hit a spot. Curley cranks this one towards that parking deck, and it's foul. Throwing him breaking balls, throwing him fastballs, and he's done a good job of handling everything. Meyer's not a guy that you would think you'd see elevate the fastball. You kind of maybe see him run one off the plate right here away, see if he can get a chase. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. And we see one low and inside for ball three. Tried to come in, just missed. From up here, it looks like ever since he got ahead 0-2, the rhythm has changed. He's sped up a little bit, trying to make the perfect pitch. Now he's got to come in there. Base runners will be moving, so any, any single He's got a chance to score two runs on this pitch. How about this? Friday night in the SEC, bases loaded, two outs, and Carson Myers, fans, Dean Carson. Second, we've already seen four combined home runs, two from each team, ten combined runs, five from each team. We're having a blast on this Friday night. <laughs> you are. I'm a pitching guy. <laughs> Making me cringe. Caden Green, second baseman for Auburn, three pitches, and he's down on strikes. Yeah, that's what you want to see out of your pitcher cause he comes right out with the first pitch strike fastball and then slider. Now watch this thing. It's just a floater and it's just so hard to deal with because it's out there at 72 miles an hour. It looks like a fastball and then it just it's a frisbee. It acts like a frisbee and it's difficult to hit. Mason Mainers back into the batter's box here for the Tigers. He struck out in the first. Come on, Love to know a little bit more about the story of. As Carver. Mainers hits this one <laughs> down into the right field corner. A one out double for Mason Mainers. Can't even talk without the bats going off. It's so loud, we might need earpieces here in a little bit. Good gracious. First pitch fastball down the way. Left handed hitters see it pretty well. And another, again, down and in. We've said that four or five times now. Down and in bad place to miss. It's the left-handed hitters right now having their way. And what we were going to remind folks that Auburn had those five runs in the first inning, but lost in that was the fact that A.J. Causey retired the first two batters that Absolutely. he faced. Two quick outs, and then Auburn's offense kind of opened up. Here's the shortstop, Cooper Weiss, who lays down a bunt, third baseline. A bunt single for the shortstop for Auburn. That J was textbook right there. JJ, I didn't want to cut you off, but I was going to say Cooper Wise has the potential, and he got the Frisbee, and he had to wait for it. Had to wait for it, had to wait for it, but he did a great job. And once he got it down with his speed, there was a no, no chance. What was so unique about it was it was the Frisbee slider. It was that good slider cost, but it's just it takes time to get there. And Wise had to wait for it. And it, what does it do? It brings up the left-handed hitter, Irish. Irish, of course, homered in the first inning. Auburn with runners at the corners. Cooper Weiss at first has 24 stolen bases on the year, and immediately you see A.J. Causey throw over. Is Auburn aggressive here on the base pass, you think? I don't think so. I think it's kind of like Tennessee. you got two guys back-to-back -back hit home runs. You don't get thrown out. Irish fouls this one off. It's nothing in one. There's not really an answer for Kazi against Ike Irish or Cooper McMurray, except make good pitches. See if you can't get a ground ball. They just, they're going to see it well left on right because of the arm slot. Cooper Weiss has got a lot of stolen bases. He, Auburn has done a little different this year. They're running more. He has picked up 24 of 27. He, he, he'll run. But I think right now, if you're Gabe Gross, you think, hey, let's let's see if we can hit some here with these two guys back to back. Not much of a lead. Mike Irish with a base hit back up the middle. The sixth run of the ball game scores for Auburn. Another RBI for Irish. And it's 6-5. Hey, these two pitching coaches are gonna have nightmares. Here's the breaking ball, off speed. Let me, let me say change up. He, you don't fool like Irish. He doesn't get out early on pitches. That was a change up, and he just left it in the middle, and he's not going to drift out there and roll over. He just stayed back and smoked it. Same problem here. I, I don't know what to say if you're the pitching coach here. What do you do against Scoop McMurray with this style of pitching? First and second, and McMurray throws, uh, takes ball one. 
I was going to say on the speed of Auburn with Cooper Weiss running at second, he's got 24 stolen bases on the year. Auburn is one of only four teams in the country that have homered at least 50 times and stolen at least 50 bases. And both guys can run. Ike Irish with a big lead, he can run too. I don't think Auburn, as a matter of fact, I'm going to guarantee they won't double steal with Cooper McMurray up. But these two guys can both run. Something deep got a chance for both of them to score. Again, one of four teams in the country with 50 homers and 50 stolen bases. What does that tell you about this Auburn offense? Mark? Well, they're balanced, right? Inside move there. Look, Weiss doing a good job moving his feet. They know he's a threat, but I just, I think if you're, if you're out there and you're A.J. Cause, you got to focus on the hitter. Forget about the running game. Try to make a pitch here. One pitch, you're out of the inning, right? We talked about that. Can he sink one down the way? Another throwback to check on Cooper Weiss. You saw just a moment ago, first time in over a decade that Auburn has had a player with at least 20 stolen bases. Yep, he's been a really good pickup for Auburn. Transfer portal guy from Miami of Ohio. Auburn lost two great draft picks. High school shortstop, they went out and got Weiss. He's done a great job. Mm. Murray fouls this one off. And again, we'll take a look at the home runs and stolen bases. Take a look at this lit. See if he sits fastball and tries to go get one. One ball, one strike, one out here in the second. Breaking See ball. the first pitch fouled off here yeah, by McMurray. Pitch. Like over the last few years, it's becoming more and more common in college baseball. We see some of these pitchers come in, in the middle of counts. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, I think it was a good call. I, can't, I think Coach Vitello just knew that there was not an answer for Cooper McMurray, for Causey against Cooper McMurray. And so maybe a little bigger arm, a little more velocity here from Combs. Now with a one-two count. Ahead of the count, a ball and two strikes. A throw back to Cooper Weiss, and that one was in danger of getting out to center field. We saw Dean Curley, the shortstop for Tennessee, hop up and hold on to that one. Well, if Tennessee, heck, trying to get an out without throwing a strike, right? Can we get an <laughs> out on the base pass? Why not? 1-2 to McMurray outside. Two balls and two strikes. It's become an offensive game. These guys are, we talked about how big Tennessee is. Auburn equally just big and physical, aluminum bats. And on the hands, McMurray out of the way, and the counts run full. Fastball at 91. So a good arm, but a lot of walks. You know he's nervous, fired up. Emotions are running high for him right now. Can he relax and make a good pitch? That pitch misses up high in the zone. Ball four, a walk for McMurray, and that has loaded the bases. And this is what, what we heard when we talked to Coach Vitello yesterday, or maybe Thursday, yeah, yesterday, on our phone call with him. You could hear the concern in his voice about the pitching. Tomorrow, chance beam outstanding, but you could just kind of hear the concern. He knew his team could hit. He loves the way they play defense, but he was concerned a little bit about the pitching long term. So we look at Bobby Pierce stepping into the batter's box. A single, a run scored. First pitch hit on the ground to first. Tennessee looking to turn two, and they can't. Bobby Pierce hustling down the line. The seventh run of the game comes in to score for Auburn. Tennessee does get an out, but Auburn brings another run home to score. Well, and heck, outs right now are in high demand, so it's a good out, but that's a cue ball. It was a breaking ball off the end of the bat and probably cut that ball, probably be thrown out of play, but he just kind of cued it off the end of the bat, got the run in, and gave Auburn two-run lead. Christian Hall, an RBI single in the first. It's a different look for the Auburn hitters. They were seeing a low arm slot sinker ball guy. Now it's more of a high arm slot with a little more velocity. Runners are at the corners for Auburn. As Christian Hall takes ball one. Pretty good breaking ball, just missed. Good take there by Hall. That was a good one, that one had some bite. One zero, and there's a swing and a miss. It's one and one. Well, and there's the velocity. That was 91 up, so he beat him there a little bit with the fastball up and out of the zone, and, and that's the difference. They were facing lower slot 88. Now they're facing up in the zone 91. So it's a different look for the hitters. Auburn played on the road at UAB earlier this week. We saw Christian Hall play against his former team and went deep. 
hit a home run against his former team when Auburn played UAB on Wednesday. Auburn hit four or five of them, didn't they? Heck, they scored 27 runs last week against A&M. Yeah. A&M came in the top five in the country in ERA and pitching stats, and Auburn put up 27 runs and got swept. Tennessee in this second inning has been very cautious with Auburn on the base paths. Yeah, they're running more. We talked about that. Auburn 35 stolen bases this year. They've been thrown out half the time. They have been thrown out 28 times. They've stolen 35. As we see this one miss outside for ball two. 35 stolen bases amongst the starters today for Auburn. Again, over 50 as a team. One of four teams in the country with over 50 steals and over 50 home runs. It's a 7-5 lead for Auburn here in the second inning. And we see a 2-1 pitch coming to Christian Hall and a swing and a miss. Good Off speed ball. there. That's right. Throwing breaking balls and fastball counts. That's good pitching. Now, can Combs get out of this thing? Can he make that pitch? He was a little high there on Pierce and missed with two strikes. Can he get in there and make some pitches? Look for the same pitch here. 2-2 two -two. outside and the count's full. Pitching is a game of repetition. I mean, really, what sport isn't? But you've got to repeat the motion, repeat the rhythm over and over and over. Combs through a good breaking ball for two strikes, then miss their high. Different rhythm, different, different uh, result. Payoff pitch. And Christian Hall goes the other way. It's an RBI for the Tigers' designated hitter. And it's the eighth run to score here for Auburn. A little bit of magic wand here. Watch this, JJ. Pretty good breaking ball. Watch him just kind of slap it. That's a great look. Just playing. Really, it's just the old-fashioned game of pepper. Take a pitch middle of the way and just kind of slap it over there. Good piece of hitting. Ike Irish comes in to score to make it 8-5. to five, And we'll see Cade Ballou step into the left-handed batter's box. Cranked a home run on the first pitch he saw back in the first inning. And now Cade Ballou will lay down a bunt. Fielded by the pitcher, Combs and throws over to first for the out. Well, there's one point. Hit a home run. Yeah. That's what's happening here tonight. We're having home run derby at the park, and uh, there's real live pitching out there, which is even more impressive. We're enjoying every second of it so far. You are. <laughs> Remember, I'm a retired pitcher. As we see Dalton Bargo foul off the first pitch, it's nothing and one. Look at tonight. Already seven combined extra base hits. Both teams done a good job with runners in scoring position. And yet, not a pitcher's day. That's a good pitch right there as Carson Myers is ahead, nothing in two. It is, and I felt good. I don't know why. I just felt good about when they brought Carson Myers in because of what he brings to the table, the pitch ability. I felt good about it when he came in the game. He's got a long way to go, but making some good pitches here so far. 0-2. Oh, Up in the zone for ball one. And again, you see a, a young pitcher with an 0-2 count, and he lost rhythm. He fell off to the third base side. Maybe he slipped, possibly, but usually a pitcher trying to make a better pitch, throw it harder. You don't have to. Just a better location. Fouled off by Bargo to stay alive. One of my favorite sayings with pitchers is location, not effort. I did it. Every pitcher does. You get an 0-2 count right here. You'd like to see Myers take that good breaking ball and just let it work. He's got a really good one. See if he can bury it down and away. Foul tipped into the mitt. That's a strikeout that time for Carson Myers, and it's the first out of the inning. I think it was a two-seam fastball in. J.J. That ball had some serious life. And watch this thing run in hard and just tie the hitter up. I mean a good one, too. Good life, 87 miles an hour. Great spot. Third strikeout of the game for Carson Myers. As we see Hunter Inslee take one. Flew out to right field his first time. Good breaking ball, 1-0. Throw the breaking ball over the plate, just get it in there. Most hitters, probably 95% are going to take that pitch, 1-0 count, looking for a fastball. 1-1. Carson Myers works quick, gets the ball. The defense stays alert. Young pitchers, if you want your defense to stay on their toes, get the ball and throw it. Don't walk around, don't pace around. Get it and throw it, keep everybody alive and in the game. Ball three outside. Tennessee looking for a one-out base runner here in the third. One of the things you love about Ike Irish is the energy. Got a lot of energy behind the plate. Coaching Myers right there. Stay here. Get in the middle of the plate with me. Let's make some pitches. 
And there's a walk. Psych like Irish chats with his pitcher, Carson Myers. And it is a one out base runner here for Tennessee. I want to try to avoid, when I say bottom of the order, they're not bad hitters, obviously, with Tennessee, but it's just not that wrecking crew one through five. You just don't want to walk the guys down the bottom, you know? Have to get ahead of count because that. <laughs> Moore's waiting yep. for his third at bat in three innings. Cal Stark, the catcher for Tennessee, takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. He singled his first time up and scored a run on Christian Moore's home run. They're making hitting look easy. It's not. Again, it's the hardest thing to do in, in any sport. And I, I didn't play football. I know it's a physical game. Basketball, you got to be an athlete. But... Hitting a baseball when it's doing something different every pitch, and these guys are making it look like it's just a little easier than it really is. Oh, one high and outside for ball one. We told folks coming in they'd be in for an offensive display, and we've seen it so far. Setting the tone for this weekend, a big series between Auburn and Tennessee. And here is a one-out single for Cal Stark, and that's going to put runners at first and second for the Volunteers. And back to the top of the order, here comes Christian Moore. Yeah, I don't think Tennessee, they haven't missed a mistake. That was a ball over the middle, 1-1 one, one count. That they just, they just are punishing anything that you miss, and they may have no pitching change. We, we heard that from Coach Thompson, Coach Teaver walking back out there again. The bull, tell me things that go into a pitcher dominating the strike zone. Christian Moore swings at the first pitch, hits it high in the air to right field. We'll see Bobby Pierce put it away. Tennessee will tag and advance to third to put runners at the corners with two outs. He's seen three pitches. Sinsley <laughs> on the move. He's got a home run, a single, and a fly ball to right. <laughs> he doesn't like to stand there and take, does he? So Christian Moore retired, and it brings Blake Burke to the batter's box. A lefty-lefty matchup coming right here between Carson Myers and Blake Burke, who's also two for two on the day. And this is a big spot here for Carson Myers to get out of this third it inning really is. against Blake Burke, one of the best hitters in all of college baseball. If not the best. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked, right? Got a hanging breaker ball. Burke shaking his head going, yeah, that was my pitch. Burke wanted to talk to third base coach. It's not something you see very often with a, with a player calls time. Hey, coach, what do you want me to do? Um, let's see. How about hit it out? Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the conversation. So Blake Burke is now riding a 20-game hitting streak. It was 19 coming in. He wasted no time back in the first inning to extend this thing to a 20-game hitting streak. And look at these numbers. Well, and I want to know what it's going to take to get him to go 0 for 4 in a game. Like, for the <laughs> next, I mean, this is a team that could very well be in Omaha. So let's just say for the next 40 games, what's it going to take to get him to go 0 for 4 and not get a hit in the game? Oh, one pitch misses outside for ball one. It's going to take somebody with some nasty stuff and some great command. A pitcher who is equally as tough as he is at the plate swinging the bat. One ball and one strike. Two outs with runners at the corners. And there's a strike. It's one and two. That's a good fastball. That's where you can get some people out. He didn't miss in the middle. He threw a good two-seam fastball. Ball. Ball's got some bite right at the end of it. Now he does, he does strike out. There are some strikeouts on Blake Burke's uh, line schedule, stat line there. So can Myers make that pitch? Not overthrow it. Just make a pitch. Runner takes off towards second. Auburn will throw down. Tennessee sends a runner to the plate. And I got Irish tag. Insley out. Tennessee trying to get tricky, but all season. Well, and he started rehab in early January, so he's back. Today is actually six months on the dot, but he started moving around and cleared to do activities, they call it, after three months. Really impressive by the Auburn doctor and staff, Dr. Goodlett and his bunch, the athletic trainer here, Anthony Sanderson, and him to work hard and get back. You know, there's just so many great resources at a place like Auburn. Tennessee has them, too. 
where they can get these guys back. They can get them strong, get them back out there. The problem with the ACL is quad getting stronger because it'll shrivel up and kind of atrophy, so to speak, and then hamstring. And those two things have got to be worked, and they got to get firing, and they did a good job with him. He looks really great. Wearing the brace, it looks like, under his uniform. Such a quick turnaround to get back into action. Again, six months ago today, Eric Guevara, as a true freshman, tore his ACL. At the time, you can only imagine what he's thinking to start his college career. Playing fall ball. There's a strikeout. Well, tough for him. Now, he didn't have much of a preseason. Here he walks in the SEC, and he's facing SEC pitching. So two at bats, two strikeouts. But th they'll give him a chance, I think, to settle in. They're excited to have him healthy and back, and a good job there uh, by Combs to come right in, throw strikes, and get the strikeout. Caden Green, the batter, with one out. Auburn's second baseman hits one to second. We'll see Christian Moore put it away. So once again, two quick outs from AJ or Aaron Combs, excuse me. But two quick outs to start the inning here in the third. We saw AJ Causey do that back in the first, and then the Auburn offense opened up. This is good. This is what Coach Vitello needs to see out of his pitching staff is somebody coming out of the bullpen and giving them quality outs, getting ahead in the count. Did it again there with a breaking ball. Good job by Aaron Combs. The walks have been a factor this inning. It's been nothing but strikes. Mason Mainers lays down a bunt on the first baseline this time, and it'll roll foul. It's the third bunt attempt we've seen. Weiss was very successful. I don't know that Coach Gross knew what Kate Ballou was doing last inning when he bunted for an out, and then Mainers right there. He's very qualified to do it, can run. Just missed it a little bit, but a good attempt. There's Gabe Gross, the Auburn third base coach. Yeah, this team's got more offensive personality. Last year's team was great, but they hit a lot of home runs. This team is, like you said, the 50 home runs, the 50 stolen bases, and the ability to bunt. We didn't see many bunts at all last year, and that's different for Gabe and his offensive boys. They can do it. They're athletic enough. They can run. They can get them down. Why not? Get the base any way you can. 1-2 to Mainers, and Good he inning. strikes out swinging. Your offense, you wasted no time getting started here tonight. Yeah, I mean, the guys came out. You could tell they were kind of more loose than normal on a Friday, and you didn't know how it was going to work out. You never know how it's going to work out until the game starts. But I think it served us well in our early at-bats. But now that we're in the middle of a game and there's been some quirky stuff happen, uh, it's important they maintain that. Watch this pitch here, Coach. Coach Aaron Combs has brought some poise, come in and mix the breaking ball and throwing well for you. Just your thoughts on him? Yeah, he's usually a great get out of a jam guy for us. And unfortunately, um, you know, they, they kind of found a hole there. Even though he threw a good pitch, it might have got us out of the inning. And 7 5 is a lot different than 8 to 5. But the bottom line is he got us back in the dugout and then went out there and threw our first zero. We're hungry for another one. We're seeing Blake Burke in the batter's box right now. What has he meant to your program, Coach? A lot. I mean, he's got a chance to go down as the winningest player ever in the program. He and a few others that, you know, have played the last three years. But there's a lot of season left in this season, which is, you know, his biggest for him because he is truly a team leader now. And I think due to last year, uh, he's now able to ca capable of handling, you know, being a guy in the middle of the order. The other team's got the scouting report. Our guys look to him. Um, it, was a, it was a heavy load last year for him to carry. He needed a great job. Really, it took him a while, but by the end of the year, he was a phenomenal player, and he's kind of picked up where he's left off, and he kind of it's fun to watch. He always plays the thing like a little like a little leaguer. This baseball world is going to be excited to see the rest of the series unfold this weekend. Coach, we appreciate the time, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks so much. Take care. That's Tennessee baseball head coach Tony Vitalo joining us as Blake Burke walks right on cue down to first. Yep, he did. He's just, he's got, he doesn't, he doesn't get out of his game, right? If you give him a pitch to hit, he hits it out. If you don't give him pitches to hit, he doesn't chase. A really good at bat there by him. And, you know, if you're Auburn, you really need to get in the count. That's what Combs did in Tennessee. Myers right there walking the leadoff guy. And as Coach Vitalo noted, Blake Burke on his way to being the winningest player in Tennessee program yeah. history. Amazing. Not too bad. Great career. <laughs> in this transfer portal world we live on, he has hung in there and really had an amazing career and really headed for an All-American year. Maybe the player, maybe the Golden Spikes Award winner if he can keep this pace up. Carson Myers throws a strike. In on the hands as we see Tennessee bring a pinch hitter to the plate, Reese Chapman. 
has stepped into the left-handed batter's box. Runner at first, no outs. And Chapman lines one to first. Cooper McMurray with the double play. Did it all by himself. Yeah, nothing you can do if you're Blake Burke. I saw him hit his hands on the ground, but there's nothing you can do. A ball hit that hard, you had the lead, you're out anywhere you go. And man, what a rocket and what a break for Carson Myers. You walk the leadoff guy and you get up a bullet and Cooper McMurray makes a great play. That just handcuffed him. What a great play. The hot corner is third base, but with the left-handed hitting, yeah. Reese Chapman there in the box. That one got to McMurray in a hurry. Kavaris tears homered in the first. And how about that double play for Carson Myers as well? You give up the walk to start the inning and a sigh of relief there after the double play. And I wonder what it was about uh, Robin Villanueva that, that Coach uh, took Coach Patello took him out of the game. He, I, I don't know. I didn't know if he got hurt. We didn't see anything, but pinch hit there, and that's the line drive out. Good inning. Here to second, Caden Greenfield, and it is a good inning for the Auburn Tigers. To the bottom of the fourth, we go. Auburn's Butch Thompson. Coach, we have seen a lot of offense so far in tonight's game. It's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Talk about your team's offensive performance so far. Sounds like it's more fun for you to watch than for a pitching <laughs> guy to watch it. But uh, great baseball game. Yeah, there's uh, both sides are punching back and forth for sure. I said the same thing, Bush. I said, look, you've called it fun twice. This ain't yeah. fun. Coach Carson Myers is giving you two zeros. Talk yeah. about what you've seen from him. Big, just uh, the first third play was huge. Really didn't have a play at second on an option. Weiss comes and gets it. And ball with smoke, but a big double play. So uh, he's hanging in there about that 50 pitch mark. We'll see how far he can go. How about the work your offense has been able to do with runners in scoring position? Yeah, they've done that. We've done that recently. We've played good good offense here for a while here. And they're just, they're just having it bats and uh, grinding it out. Best of luck the rest of the way, coach. Thanks for the time. Thanks, guys. That's Butch Thompson joining us as Cooper Weiss will lead it off now for Auburn. And I tend to forget that Butch Thompson is one of the best pitching yeah, guys in all of baseball. You're killing the pitching so, guys this fun talk. Yeah. <laughs> offense, offense, offense is my name of the game. Ten Tennessee now honoring the bunt at third for Cooper Weiss, but they're wide open at first. They're playing back, and he's pretty good at both sides of the field. 2-1 count, might get a fastball time to do it, or just swing. Yeah, Weiss will foul this one off, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Now, obviously, you have to swing. Don't want to take a risk of striking out or fouling the ball off, so you swing the bat with two strikes now and so you put one in play. Aaron Combs continues to pitch here for Tennessee, and he's got a strikeout. He yeah. gets Cooper Weiss looking. For us pitching guys, Jay, this is more like it. Now we got guys pitching, and, yeah. and, and Aaron Combs is dealing. I think that's two or three strikeouts in a row there now. And you see a good pitch here. Good breaking ball, middle a little bit, up a little bit, but a good pitch. That's probably a good miss. Probably wanted it down and away, but he missed up. Sometimes you make good misses. Here's Ike Irish, two for two on the day with two runs driven in. And Irish will take a strike. So much of this game is just confidence. And if you see Combs and Meyer, if they can just get confident, and all of a sudden they take a little sting out of these offenses, just Making confident pitches. If you make scared pitches without conviction, that was Coach Baird's word years ago. He said, if you throw a pitch without conviction, it will get a hit. And so if these guys can get a little confidence and start making conviction like that right there, a backdoor breaking ball, conviction pitches, meaning I'm in, then you can see some success in the mound. Talk about the two for two days so far for Ike Irish. has driven in two runs as well, brings the season total up to 47. And Coach Thompson told us a moment ago, his team has been driving runs in with runners in scoring position. And it's been the middle of the order for this Auburn team with Ike Irish and Cooper McMurray, just their ability to drive runs in. That's a backdoor breaking ball there. And again, you're not going to see Ike Irish. Check that out. I mean, this is the two guys back to back in this lineup, Irish and McMurray. And, and you see Braden Montgomery. Auburn got a dose of him last week at A&M. He had five home runs in the series. But he's not going to get fooled when he didn't right there. That base hit. <laughs> Look at this. Ike Irish is a magician with the baseball bat. He's, it's balance. It's rhythm. It's he, he doesn't get fooled. That was an Look off at the speed swing. pitch. He's out front a little bit. Falls down down the dirt. 
Good hitters make good things happen. We saw Christian Hall take a pitch and kind of scored it that way. And then right there, Irish goes back up the middle with a fastball low. And if you're pitching, you're going, wait a minute. That was a ball. And he got a base hit. McMurray bats for Auburn with the runner at first and one out. There's a swing and a miss. Aaron Combs is throwing his breaking ball early in the count. That's the difference. He's throwing his breaking ball for strikes early in the count. If you miss and you throw guys like this fastballs when they know it's coming, it's it's problematic. But right now he's mixing, which keeps doubt in the hitter's head. When you throw a first pitch breaking ball or a chain or any off-speed pitch early in the count for a strike, now the hitter's got a little doubt in his mind. What am I going to get? If he knows a fastball's coming, it's not pretty. Downstairs, it's one and one to McMurray. Good change up there, just missing a great take by McMurray. Arm slot, the arm speed was good, the life was good, and McMurray just saw it and took it. Cal Stark throws to first after this one, and it's Ike Irish able to dive in. Love the back pick. I love active catchers, guys that are not afraid, and that's been reinforced by Coach Vitello. Do not be afraid to throw it. That word conviction again. The ball and two strikes to McMurray. This one's inside. And that's Ike Irish Auburn's catcher running over at first. So Cal Stark, the Tennessee catcher, trying to keep Auburn's catcher close. 2-2. Two -two. And there's a swing and a miss. First time today that Cooper McMurray's been retired. Yeah, it was four straight breaking balls. And I think, I'm, I'm just guessing, Judging by this swing, kind of a, oh, I really don't want to swing. I think McMurray got caught maybe looking for a break. Oh, he's only four. He threw a good fastball up and away. Good scenario there, a good sequence there of pitches to Cooper McMurray. Bye. Four Mr. strikeouts Combs. tonight for Mr. Combs. As Bobby Pierce takes this one outside for ball one. Bobby Pierce has scored a run already in this one for Auburn. Giving Tennessee exactly what they needed, just allowing them to settle in the game a little bit and let that offense work. But on the other side, Carson Meyer doing the same thing for Auburn. Auburn just one and eight so far this season in SEC play. But if you watched their offense, that wouldn't add up for you. No, you're right, it would. And five or six of those losses have been by less than three runs. They've been in ball games. They just have had some tough luck, and they're one and eight. It's not a one and eight team. This is a team that will not be in the tank after 30 games. But they've played a mis miserable schedule at number four, number one at home, at number three at A&M, and then this week you come in here with number four again, uh, Tennessee. So. They've had some close losses. They've had some bullpen letdowns, and then they're going to be fine, I think. I think they'll be just fine. Three and one on a strike. Coach Thompson said it early. He said that if we can just get to these first four weeks, and the bad news is week five is Kentucky, who's the best team in the league. Nobody saw that coming in January. But he said it best, if we can just not get too far down. This is a big series for him. Here's a walk for Bobby Pierce to put runners at first and second. Let's show you this now. In games decided by three runs or less for Auburn baseball this season. Look eight, at this. He got eight losses. There's six up right there. And a lot of those were late in the game. The AM game was in the 12th inning. They got beat 10 to 9. So, yeah, it's been late in the game that they've given up these leads. So, when you see that, you know you have a team that, that can win. The question is who's going to get it done on the mound for them? Because the offense has not been a question. Christian Hall is two for two so far today. And Auburn's got a runner in scoring position now. They've been really successful thus far. And Christian Hall's a big reason why in tonight's game. 1-0 breaking ball, good pitch. That's where it comes if he's done anything really well. Done a lot of things, but the breaking ball has been the difference maker. These big, strong left-handed hitters keeping them off balance, throwing breaking balls for strikes. But he flips it again here, too. One count. Called strike, and it's one and two. Crowd doesn't like it. Pretty good pitch. One of the first few changeups we've seen. Pretty good pitch. Uh, maybe a little low, but a pretty good pitch. Irish runs at second. It's Bobby Pierce at first for Auburn. A one-two pitch to Christian Hall. 
is up for ball two. And these guys have proven, J.J., if you're going to be successful, you better pitch there. I mean, you better pitch there, and you need the umpire to give you the bottom part of the strike zone because the middle has been painful so far. Hall awaits a 2-2 pitch and chases after it. Slugfest has at least come to a pause. I don't know if it's over. I got a feeling there's some home run coming somewhere the rest of the night, but at least for the moment, the slugfest is on hold. Yeah, don't get too bored yeah. out there, offensive yeah. folks. It don't leave us. Come back quickly. Dryling fouls this one off. It's 1-1. One, one. Both guys are doing a good job of mixing their breaking balls. Mixing their breaking balls, getting ahead in the count. Myers did it there with a 1-0 count. One one and Dylan Dryling pops this one up way high into the ninth sky and Guevara at third makes the play. One thing you say there, get the pitcher the heck out of the <laughs> way. Get out of there. You know, you're in the you're in the middle of the field and it's just hard. Pitchers have a bad rap. We're not all bad athletes. Some of us are. But it's just being in that position right there and you charging in a lot easier play for Guerrero. So a good play by him to call him off. So one out and the shortstop, Dean Curley, stands in. The, the last four hitters, the last five hitters in the Tennessee lineup are three for nine, three for ten. So Auburn's done a good job pitching. They, they, you'd like to stay away from the top of the order as much. You'd like to keep Christian Moore on the bench for one inning at least. There's a strike. Pitch. It's one and one. Love what Carson Myers is doing. He's just taking command of the game by throwing strikes. Curley hits this one foul into the right field seats. This will be a guy you hear a lot from. Blake Burke is a junior. He's been there three years. He's done a great job. I think Curley, as he goes through the Tennessee career the next two or three years, I think he'll be a similar path. He'll probably hit a lot of home runs and be a frontline guy. And somebody Tennessee's proud to have. 1-2 is way outside. Yeah, the breaking ball really has been more consistent so far for Myers. He's thrown it in the strike zone. The fastball that we saw him miss high with a 1-2 with a count. For the breaking ball here down, Ike Irish is asking for it in the dirt. That's where he got it. Good job of hitting by Curley. Foul it off and ruin it. Still two balls and two strikes. Again, Dylan Watts started the game for Auburn. It was his first start of the year. Carson Myers has started six games this season but comes in out of the bullpen on this Friday night and has looked good since he's entered. Yeah, he sure has. Two high energy catchers, Cal Stark and Ike Irish. It really all starts there. I mean, that's why you see so many managers in professional baseball with former catchers. They they just see the whole game and they run the whole game. Both these guys back picking from Stark and Irish asking for pitches and, and pumping his fists and doing all he can to motivate these pitchers. 2-2, two -two, hit to second. Caden Green will stay with it. There's two quick outs here in the fifth. Next Friday on the SEC Network, Ole Miss hosts. No the football they have, like something what do they call it, but the Egg Bowl. It, the Egg Bowl is there a name for the baseball series? I don't know about good pitch there. Stalton Bargo checks at this one. It's nothing in one. It'll be packed regardless. Yeah. Fifteen thousand plus watching that series. Oh one two out. And it's ball one. Carson Myers settling in well for Auburn on the mound. Good pitch there, outer half, just missed. These pitchers with these potent offenses, they need. We saw one last inning for Combs, a good pitch down. Carson Myers needs that spot. That's why it's so offenses. hard for me to be settling in. <laughs> That's exactly right. Good breaking ball. Love what he's doing with the breaking ball. He's thrown it really every count, but there was 2-1 count. Good swing by Bargo. Just a really good pitch. Myers got one in there only. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Lefty, lefty matchup. Here comes Carson Myers. There's a swing and a miss. I'm third of the order here for Auburn. As we see Cade Ballou lead it off. Swing at this one for nothing and one. Cade Ballou from Auburn High School. I've known since he was nine. He could hit at nine. 
and he can hit it 19. He's just <laughs> been a hitter ever since he uh, put a bat in his hands. Good pitch there. Curveball from Combs. Change up from Combs. Look for the fastball up here. Will they elevate or maybe try to bury the breaking ball? See what the strategy is. Oh, two. And a nearly hit Cade Blue. Yeah. It's one and two. That was pitch number 50 of the day from Aaron Combs. And we don't know. You know, the innings aren't that high, so the, so the pitch number could be a factor, but he's done his job. He's done more than yeah, his job. Yeah, does his job right there. Yeah. Picks up another strikeout as Ballou goes down swinging. Six strikeouts. He's done more than his job. He came in with 13 innings. Watch this breaking ball. Back foot, two strike. That's exactly how you draw it up. Well done. Eric Guevara, 0 for 2 on the day with a pair of strikeouts. Looking to get his night going. Combs came Takes in with strike. JJ at seven outings. Two games started, but only 11.1 .1 innings. So again, he, he's at uh, what how many pitches? 652 pitches. So this is probably his PR so much for the year. I think he looks better. He's settling in. Yeah, quickly ahead here, nothing in two. And Guevara still settling in. His second start. Six months to the day of tearing his ACL and competing in competition here. And a tough gig to really get your second start, your fifth, sixth at bat, and do it on the Friday night in the yeah. SEC. That's just most of the guys had 20 games of you know non-conference games to get ready. He's doing it against the conference and pop up the first base there. Foul territory at first. Blake Burke makes the play. And the hard part for him, for Guevara, is his confidence. You know, you know that Coach Gross and Donald Maker are telling him, hey, hang in there. You didn't have the same offseason, preseason everybody else had. But still, he's got he need to have success to build confidence. So you just you hope he can get some hits and get it going and, and do it at this level of baseball. Caden Green with two outs and the base is empty. We'll take a strike. Man, Combs is just dominating the strike zone. Breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, and then pop a 91. 01 oh, on the in. ground to second, and Christian Moore able to toss this over to first. A 1 2 3 inning. Yeah, that's it, no question. And, you know, so Armstrong, this is a good chance for him to get two quick outs. He's got two right handed hitters up. He's dominant against right handed hitters because of the sinker ball. And he get back to the top of the oil with two outs. Inslee, Stark, Moore, the three batters do up this inning for Tennessee. It is an 8-5 lead for Auburn here on this Friday night. Strike one as John Armstrong will settle in. He will pound the strike zone. And he will pound the strike zone with a sinker and a slider. Two pitches. Been throwing for strikes. He's very good at it. Keep the ball down and get ground balls. Foul tipped into the mitt. Nothing in two. And not your average sinker ball guy. 91 there. So good, good sink on his fastball. No balls and two strikes. 0 2 pitch to Ensley. Call third strike. Big one out of the bullpen for John Armstrong. It's what you call paint the black. JJ, watch this fastball. Ike Irish, boom, does not move. A little late life back over the plate. Really good pitch. Glove side location for a pitcher. Depends on rhythm. You don't rush a pitch. You can finish well. You can extend out. That's what he did. Made a good pitch. Number nine batter, Cal Stark, on the ground to third. Guevara has it for Auburn and a low throw that McMurray handles. And look at that, two quick outs. Yeah, it was a really good read. And John, his, his, the Armstrong is doing exactly what Auburn needed him to do, get two ground balls, right-handed hitters. But that was a great move there by Guevara. He didn't, he, he read it. He thought he could come get it, couldn't get it, paused, fielded it, threw it across the infield. So a good read by him to not charge it and have it kick off, Auburn make an error. Four pitches, two outs. That's getting it done. A little more like it, J.J. Thank you very much, yeah. the offensive people. And back to the top of the order for Christian Moore, who's two for three today, including a big home run in the second inning. Hey. 
1-0. Boy, does he swing the bat. Yeah, foul. <laughs> he, he does not get cheated. How do you beat good hitting? You make good pitches. And John Armstrong right there with a 1-0 slider down and away. Moore looking for a fastball. He got the breaking ball, just missed. A good pitching right there. Keep the ball down against this Tennessee offense right there. That's where you can do it. And it's 91. This is a power sinker. This is not just your average Mark Fuller sinker. This is one that's getting after a little bit with some bite to it. There's a swing and a miss. John Armstrong with his second strikeout. Doing a great job. And then you see um, Auburn's pitching staff as well. They come in, commanded the breaking balls, gotten ahead in the count, done a great job. A little bit of everything, hadn't we? Mainers takes this one, 1-1. One, one. Here's our game summary. A lot of work from the top four orders for Tennessee, and it's been Aaron Combs, who's been excellent here in relief. Total control of everything he's doing. Six punch out, throwing the best, a big hit for Auburn. Big hit for Mason Mainers. Down the right field line, Mainers wants extra bases. He'll slide in safely a leadoff double. J.J. Mason Mainers is fast, but this was turned into a double right out of the box. If you're coaching young hitters, tell them to turn every single into a double. He knew when he got that ball down the line, he was going too. If you get, that's a great throw there too. A little off, but a great throw. If you get thrown out, you get thrown out. But the odds are you're going to beat the throw, and he did good, strong baseball there by Auburn. Teach your young hitters to turn every single into a double. The second batter in the order for Auburn is Cooper Weiss. He'll hit this one on the ground to second. Tennessee thought about going to third, but ultimately Christian Moore just gets the short out over at first. Yeah, Mainers paused a little bit, and what he's been taught is on contact right side of the field, you go, and he paused a little bit, which caused Moore to take a look, but a good job by Cooper Weiss, which now brings up King Kong. King Kong comes up with a runner on third and a chance for Auburn to add one more run. Also known as Ike Irish, <laughs> who's three for more. three on the day. Mom and dad, we've changed his name. <laughs> it's King Kong. And uh, look at oh. this. Tennessee doesn't want to pitch to him. You walk the million-dollar guy to face to the other million-dollar guy. Yes. That's going to put runners at the corners for Cooper McMurray. What does that feel like if you're Ike Irish? I don't know because I always gave those. I didn't get <laughs> those. But if you're Cooper McMurray, you're going, really? Okay. Well, let's see what Cooper McMurray can do with it. They're going to have a pitching change. So I think there's probably going to be a lefty. Coach Botello knew what he was doing. He knew why he wanted to put him on. Now you're going to set up a double play ball and bring in. I think I saw a lefty toss, and we'll see. Tennessee head coach Tony Vitalo will make a pitching change. Auburn leads 8-5 with runners at the corners. Runners at the corners with one out here in the sixth. The pitching change as the day's done for Aaron Combs. The junior right-hander did a nice job over four innings for Tennessee. Responsible for the runners on as Tennessee brings in the senior lefty, Kirby Connell. Five foot 11 from Johnson City, Tennessee, making his 11th appearance of the season and coming in at a big spot. Yeah, pretty good number, JJ. You got to throw strikes in this situation. He's only walked five guys. The numbers are good. The strikeouts are good. He's got to throw strikes. Cooper McMurray is going to face him. So I like the call to walk Ike Irish. It wasn't, I don't think it was so much fear of Ike Irish as it was double play. Coach Vitello knew we had a lefty uh, getting ready. Well, it's a lefty lefty matchup for the big left handed hitter, Cooper McMurray, and you're thinking, advantage pitcher yeah. maybe but not so fast <laughs> not so fast look at the not splits so here for mcmurray that's right pretty exact numbers almost it's really amazing you don't see it very often it tells you he's just got a great feel for what he's doing a lot of lefties will pull off of left-handed pitchers but mcmurray able to stay in the strike zone with the barrel and keep it there no matter who he's facing Murray's already got a hit tonight and a run scored. A chance to drive in the ninth run of the game here for Auburn. Ten, as Connell throws a first pitch strike. Well, 10 times out of 10, you're going to see a first pitch break him on the situation. You just know he's sitting on the fastball, and you have to throw it for a strike, and Connell did. 0-1, oh, chased after it. It's That's all he's going to get. That's all he's going to get. He'll get another slider here. Connell is a rare bird now. This is five years at the same school. 
You know, you know my thoughts on the transfer portal. This guy's <laughs> been at Tennessee for all five years. Well done by him. McMurray hits one deep to center. Inslee in center field makes the catch. Tagging and heading to the plate to score is Mason Mainers. And Auburn now leads by four runs. Yeah, it's a really big RBI. Big RBI. Now gives Auburn a 4 1 lead. And I want you to see where the breaking ball was. Let's go back. Got one in the middle and got the RBI. One zero pitch to Pierce called strike and it's one and one. It's just that four run lead that McMurray just gave them. It just it, it just feels different. I don't know something about a three run lead four run lead. It just feels different And Auburn now in a pretty good driver's seat as it starts to get later in the game. And Auburn has the guy in pitching that they want in. He is kind of their rock has been John Armstrong. Now he's going to have to hold the lead if uh, Auburn keeps it right there. Yeah, it's a four run lead for Auburn. Two outs here in the sixth. Ike Irish takes off towards second. Tennessee gets caught up, and Ike I Irish agree. is safe. That's a great call by the second base umpire. It's a great call because the reaction is to just call him out because the ball beat him. Yeah, the throw got there very That's right. quick. And they're going to, uh, the catcher, I, he agrees. I think Tennessee, no, he beat it. Ike Irish did a great job, and Give kudos there to Jeff Wright, the umpire, for not just assuming he was out because the ball got there first. For a passive approach there by Moore. The call of sec safe at second base stands. Tennessee has used one challenge. They have one remaining. Tennessee loses a challenge as the call stands. Another look. Christian Moore fields. See where Moore is. He's kind of away from the bag and, and, and kind of went with him a little bit instead of slapping the tag right on him. See if Auburn can make that hurt. It's Could Auburn's be a big got a runner play. in scoring position. Could be a big play here, JJ. Bobby Pierce able to get a two out base hit. Auburn has done a nice job tonight with runners in scoring position. One and two to Pierce. This one's low and inside for ball two. When you're a base runner at first and you get picked off by a left-hand pitcher, you're taught to go. And Ike Irish went. Don't stop. Don't get the run down. Run and try to make them throw you out. And he beat it. So good baseball there. 2-2. Two -two. Inside, ball three. And the home plate umpire there and Seth Buckminster says that actually hit Bobby Pierce. So he's going to be given first base. And now Cal Stark wants a review, and they're going to review it. That time he said, give it to me. So they're going to review it now. A little while ago, Cal Stark said, Tennessee no. is challenging the ruling of hit by pitch. So Tennessee could use <laughs> both of their challenges could look right here. This is two challenges in the span of two or three pitches. But I, I'm going to go with Cal Stark because he's he caught it, right? He knows better than anybody what happened. Yeah. You're that back foot yeah. for Bobby Pierce. And Bobby Pierce didn't really move. I'm going with Cal Let's Stark. Take a look at this. He caught the ball. No, didn't touch it. So Bobby Pierce will come back. So the great thing about the SEC now is there's no more leaving the field. If you're wondering what's going on, the umpires now have the earpiece. The home office reviews it. They make the call. And it just makes it flow so much better than having to leave the field, watch it underneath the hood over there. So much cleaner. SEC does everything pretty well. As the head coaches, Butch Thompson for Auburn and Tony Vitalo look on. Play is under review whether or not Bobby Pierce was hit by the pitch. I mean, the guy yelling for the review is the guy that caught the ball, right? <laughs> I'm going with him. Yep. And I did find it interesting. Bobby Pierce never really moved. Uh, he didn't act. No drama, no hopping around. <laughs> There's Bobby Pierce standing on first. We'll wait and see if he's got to head back to the batter's box. Ike Irish having conversations with the middle infield for Tennessee. Saying we just were in review. Yep. And you see that a lot in baseball. There's just so many games. These guys all play summer ball together. They know each other. So it's almost like a friendship. Even though I'm trying to beat you, I'll talk to you a little bit. The call on the field of hit by pitch is going to be overturned. The batter will come back up to the plate. 
So there Tennessee it is. Tennessee has one challenge remaining. Successful challenge this time from Tennessee. It did not hit Bobby Pierce. So it'll be a full count. I'm two for two. <laughs> I haven't used any of mine. I'm yeah. good up here, JJ. <laughs> Bobby Pierce throws the batting gloves back on, grabs his bat. All right, so can Kirby Connell now make a pitch? He's shown a really good breaking ball. It's a four-run lead by Auburn. It's starting to get a little bit late. That run out there, Ike Irish, again, they're all big. It's kind of a strange statement to say, but it's just another big RBI for Auburn in desperate need of a win. Full count to Bobby Pierce. The three-two pitch. Hit oh well my goodness. Field. Bobby Pierce just foul. Oh, that was gonna be one you have to write up. You have to write a story about that one. It didn't happen, but man oh man. Big swing there. Got the breaking ball down and pitch. in. Yeah, I got the breaking ball down and in. A year ago, Connell was one of their best relievers. Had a great year pitching the Cosmos series. If he can make a big pitch here. Another payoff pitch, and this is a walk. So now Bobby Pierce will go back to first. And runners are at first and second with two outs for the Auburn Tigers. Pitch hitter here, Get Miller for Auburn. Christian Hall was due up. That would have been a lefty-lefty matchup yep. for the Tigers' big slugger. Yep. Instead, Gavin Miller will be the pinch hitter here for Auburn. Well, and why not? You know, Coach Thompson, Coach Gross using their bench. You've got a chance now with one big hit to really stretch this thing out and feel a little better about your lead. Uh, so, yeah, go with the matchup. And Gavin Miller's played a lot of baseball for he Auburn has. this season. First pitch to Miller. Throw back down to first, oh, and Pierce is safe. The back pick once again from Cal Stark. I'm going to have to get Cal Stark's autograph. I just, <laughs> I, you know, I, all I coach is summer ball, but in the summer I tell our catchers, guys, throw it. And this is so active and so alert and so good. It almost got Bobby Pierce. Really good. Pierce is swinging a miss, and it's one and one. Good change up by Connell. He's on the breaking ball and the change up for command. Auburn pinch hitters seven for nine since March 23rd, two homers. Here's a chopper back to second. Christian Moore fields and wins the foot race to the bag. Auburn adds their the advantage in the situation. See what John Armstrong does. First pitch and a big Throw swing right from How about Burke. that? 91 by you. I mean, that was just a lecture. That was power on power, and John Armstrong won that pitch. We saw John Armstrong come in in the sixth inning for Auburn, now pitching his second inning. Back That's to the one 91 one count. with a changeup. Nixon there. Burke, like Irish, he doesn't get fooled. That was a good changeup, and he never even thought about it. So he's very balanced. Takes a strike. Mm -hmm. It's one and two. Another good changeup. So you double up. You miss with the ball. Come back and throw it again, but a really good one there. A tough spot down the way. Good pitch by Armstrong. Armstrong had two strikeouts in the sixth inning. Blake Burke belts one right center field at the warning track. Cade Ballou able to make the catch. He that got ball it had enough some carry in. To it. it did, JJ, but he got it enough in to not let him get extended. And man, that one had some rain coming down with it, but he did get him out. Good pitch and a good sequence by John Armstrong right there against an elite electric hitter. So here is Reese Chapman, who came on as a pinch hitter back in the fourth inning. He lined into a double play. So this one's inside for ball one. What sets Armstrong apart? He's not a one-dimensional, can only get righties out sinker ball guy. Is the power fastball, but the command. He's throwing three pitches. Slider there, he missed, but threw a change up to Burke twice. He commands three pitches, and there's the change up again, a really good change up. That's the difference. That, that's how he offsets the left-handed hitters getting a little better look from a right-handed lower slot as he, he mixes his pitches. Good pitching beats good hitting, J.J., any day of the week. Every sport. 
You do a lot of softball. I'm sure you see the same thing. Oh, yeah. Good pitch. I don't care who comes in, hitting how many home runs, whatever they do. You make pitches. You change speeds. You get ahead in the count. You win most battles in the box. One ball and two strikes. The one-two pitch. There's a swing and a miss. A strikeout of Reese Chapman for the second out of the inning. 93. 93. And if you're Coach Thompson, Coach Tiford, the way he's throwing right now, he's out there. It's his ball game. They've got a really good closer with Will Cannon. But at this moment, John Armstrong is in cruise control, and it's his ball game. Sauburn pitching staff has retired 10 straight batters. That's See amazing. Kavaris tears. Against this offense. Step into the batter's box. Big three-run homer for Tears in the first inning. And I have to wonder the feeling inside that Auburn dugout after Tears home run in the first yeah, inning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Been there. Tennessee, the away team, so they're batting first. It's a three-run homer in the first to take that lead. We talked about Gabe Gross a little bit. He, he was on a team in 2001. We were 0-9. We started out 16-1. and And we came into this stadium against number four in the country, J.J. Tennessee. And the first pitch of the game was a single. The third pitch of the game was a double. And, here, and we're thinking, here we go again. And we swept them. And we ended up going 15-6. and six. This team has that potential. And I guarantee they felt the same way in the first inning. And they battled back. There's a strike on a 3-0 count. It's 3-1. and one. This team has the potential. It, it, when you're at Auburn, you're shooting for 15 and 15. Not to say you're not trying to win an SEC championship, but you're shooting for 15 and 15, which gets you in a regional. And they've gone to Omaha two of the last four years with teams that were around 500 and the ball four there in a the walk by Armstrong. But that's what you're shooting for. So you're one and eight. And you right now you got a small grip on two and eight. Now you see what Auburn has done two out of the four last four years. And they weren't teams that won 20 games. They were teams that battled through, got around 500, got in the regionals and did a lot of damage. In the history of Auburn baseball, six different teams have made it to Omaha to compete in the College World Series. In the history of Tennessee baseball, six different teams have made it to Omaha to compete in the College World Series. I would bet you somewhere in Butch Thompson's office, he's got a calendar or something where he's just looking, okay, we got to do this. Here's what we have to do to climb out of this one and eight hole. We've got to do this, this, and this to get back to close to 15, 14, and 16. In this league, that'll get you in a regional. There's a strike, and it's one and one to Dylan Dryling, the left fielder. And so much can change between now and late May. The teams that are cruising now, they may tank it. The pitching may go south, and the teams that have struggled. Look at Ole Miss two years ago. I mean, they came out of nowhere. Won 10 games in a row down the stretch after really finishing towards the bottom of the West and struggling, and then won a national championship. It's a gauntlet to go through SEC play. Auburn was in College Station last weekend, swept by the Aggies of Texas A&M. A weekend ago, Tennessee hosted Georgia and took two out of three in that series. Game one of three between these two teams this weekend. And Auburn's got a 9-5 lead here in the seventh inning. When you're in this league, you're almost glad to see regional play come because <laughs> yeah. you don't get beat up quite as bad. Now, if you're John Armstrong here, you're kind of playing around with fire. You just don't want to give this Tennessee team any more free bases, need to make pitches. The 2-2 pitch is fouled back. It stays two balls and two strikes. Dryling, one of those guys we talked about, they have four guys with double-digit home runs. The only team in the country that can say that. They all came in with 10. He's one of those guys, 10 home runs, 352 batting average. They hit. They do strike out some, but the batting average and the, and the home run numbers in the top of the order are really, really good. Tennessee looking for that next big swing. They've got a runner on first with two outs here in the seventh. Chopper back in play. Ike Irish fields and throws over to first. For the out. It's the seventh inning stretch. National champs have been the SEC, and that's why. And Auburn playing in the SEC. It's their fourth SEC series this weekend, and Auburn's playing a ton of top ten teams. Yeah, and I promise you there's no panic in Butch Thompson. He's just been doing it too long. I mean, he's 30 years, Mississippi State pitching coach, Georgia pitching coach, here now for nine years. And, there's just been adjustments. What can we do to win the next ballgame? So far tonight, so, well, so good. 
A couple of uh, offensive changes with Guevara coming in at third, starting a new pitcher in Watts. Didn't work great, but Myers came in and has settled things down, and now uh, John Armstrong throwing great. So adjustments, not panic. Tate Ballou chases after this one. And it's a strikeout. Are you sure? Coach Thompson let, thought, thought that ball might have, might have bounced. Let the on up, I know about it. It was in the dirt, I agree. That ball got some dirt, and it's supposed to be a pick it up throw at first. He called him out real quick. I think Coach Thompson's right. Going to review. Yeah, he's going to review. I agree. I agree. I think it's a great review. And and Cade Blue made it to the bag. Now he's back in the dugout now, but he made it to the bag. I'm not sure if can we review this, JJ. I don't know. After he's already gone back into the dugout, yeah, yeah I'm not sure. I don't know. This is the conversation between Butch Thompson and home plate umpire Seth Buckminster. We've already seen Tennessee challenge two different plays. I saw Coach Thompson ask K. Blue when he went back to the dugout. He asked him and very quickly spun around and, and yelled, time out. Reacted. Yep, that's right. I guess I guess Buckminster gave him the answer he wanted, or maybe not. Eric Guevara steps in and takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Love to see young Guevara get a base hit here just to get him going a little bit. You know, just you're facing a fifth year senior in the SEC. It's just tough yeah. to get your wheels going, get your wheels wet when you're having to face this kind of pitching. No preseason in January. He was not playing in swing like everybody else was. Down on strikes is Eric Guevara. And that's the second out of the inning. You don't want to use the word not fair, but it's not fair. I mean, this is a nasty change up here with two strikes to a young guy who's trying to learn how to hit in this league and really trial under fire, right? Trial by fire, so to speak. And it's Caden Green, the number nine batter in the order for Auburn, also in the midst of an 0 for 3 night, looking to turn that around, pick up a two-out base runner here for Auburn. Been a little bit of a revolving door at second with uh, Fabian Plants of second, Hernandez. Nobody at second base for Auburn has really hit well. They just haven't swung the bat well there. And, Caden Green hit a home run last week at A&M. He hit one the week before against Troy up in Huntsville. He's had some good at bats. They're just trying to find something offensive, I think, and rotate guys at second base. Green fouls this one off. It's nothing in two. Going to the eighth inning, Tennessee will have their six, seven, and eight batters due up. As we see Caden Green Hit a fair ball down the third base line. And he'll easily be able to beat that one out. The speed of Caden Green, and he's booking it right out of the batter's box. He can really run, and yeah, that was a tough play from the get go, right down the left field line. Dalton Bargo stuck with it, but look, by the time he gets there. Look at where he is. Good gracious, <laughs> he's in the stands. And to Green's credit, he didn't play umpire. He didn't look and watch and wait, he was gone. Good lesson for young hitters. You run, let them umpire, and he did. So Mason Mainers will step in. One one pitch. There's a strike. Unless you go to Fayetteville last week and get swept, they've come back now and they beat Vanderbilt today ten to six. So. <laughs> this league is just, it's wild. You go out to Fayetteville and get swept, come back to your own place against the number seven team in the country. Now you've won two games. LSU, of course, the reigning national champions. SEC baseball knows a thing or two about winning national championships. Sure do. Four of the last four. 0-1, oh, bunted back foul by Mainers. Mayers is, Mayers is a complete player. He's got the he's got the six home runs. He's got some RBIs. He can run. He can run. He's a really good addition in this transfer portal war we live in from Jacksonville State. He's been a good player for Auburn, settled in to, at the top of the order. Fouls off another pitch. It stays nothing in two. Kentucky goes to nine and one, JJ. That's amazing. Great they start. Were, 
Yeah, preseason they were pretty low in the East, and man, they are nine and one, tied with Arkansas for the most wins, fewest losses in the league. Mainers down on strikes to bring the seventh inning to. As he gets his face right-handed hitter, and he's yep. been pretty good against both sides, but he's really dominant versus these righties. This is the bottom part of the order: six, seven, and eight due up, starting with the shortstop Dean Curley. We've been highlighting kind of the difference in the top five hitters for Tennessee compared to the bottom four. Three for 11, six, seven, eight, nine. And Armstrong very quickly ahead, nothing in two. It's such a funky throw in motion, and I don't mean that bad. It's, it's, it's deceptive. It's not what you would teach. It's just hard to pick up. And again, it's not 82 with sink. It's 89 to 91, 93 last inning. Watch, watch how quickly the ball gets out of his hand. Chopper to second, and Caden Green puts it away. As a quick start for Tennessee in tonight's game. Five runs in those first two innings with four extra base hits. But how about the last five? Yeah, and I don't think Tennessee lost any concentration. I think Auburn just pitched well. You know, Tennessee came out and they punished the mistakes, and then Auburn quit making the mistakes, and hadn't they'll do that again. Good pitching beats good hitting any day. The Braves had a pitcher years ago. JJ, you're a little bit young, but a guy named um, oh gosh, I'm gonna lose his name. Very similar style to John Armstrong. He was a Greg McMichael. He was a closer for the Braves and threw about 87, 88. But it was this kind of style. It was just really funky, and hitters couldn't pick it up. He changed speeds. He was a closer in the major leagues for a few years for the Braves, and it wasn't just power stuff. It was just, uh, as a matter of fact, Armstrong stuff's so probably better. But it's just that deceptive look. Similarities and differences from Armstrong and. A.J. Causey that we saw start today's game for Tennessee. Causey's lower and longer. It's more of a longer arm swing. And it's not it's not that. Causey wasn't 91 yeah. to 93. He was 88. And, you know, Causey relies on that big breaking ball. But this guy is just pumping it. One ball and two strikes. Kind of a no-nonsense look in his face and a no-nonsense approach to the home plate. Pitch from Armstrong. There's a swing and a miss. It's a strikeout. Four strikeouts tonight for John Armstrong and Dalton Bargo. Dalton Bargo, excuse me, just struck out swinging for the fourth time as well. well. And you don't want to lose John Armstrong for tomorrow. And if you push him too much more, he's at 33 pitches. You could lose him for Saturday and Sunday, but you want to win. If I'm Coach Thompson, his mind right now is this guy's dealing. We ain't touching him. You've already lost him for tomorrow. Hard to bring a guy back the next day after 35 pitches or close to 40. Um, but, man, he is just cruise control. And, Mark, you felt the same way about Carson Myers when he came out of the game today. I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. No question. So, good pitching. And you know, you're going to lose those two guys for the series, but you're going to win the game. Win today. We're about tomorrow when it comes around, right? Nothing in two. Tennessee's down to their last four outs, trailing by four runs against Auburn. Really amazing to be so electric and then be so shut down after the pitching took over. Slow roller to first. Armstrong fields the catch from McMurray. And no lead safe None. with what Tennessee's able to do. No chance. And not to mention, we'll see the top of their order when yeah. we go to the ninth inning. Yep. Well, this I'm, is the top of the order for Auburn here in the eighth. Love to see Weiss try it. Weiss mm. tries to lay down a bunt right there, but it spins foul, and it's nothing in two. He got a breaking ball, and he was out front. He got his body moving before the bat. But, man, he had it set up. Now you got to swing with two strikes. But the first baseman was deep. Second base is shifted way over, and the pitcher's falling off the mound. So he had it, just got a good pitch, to a tough pitch to bunt, a good pitch by the pitcher. Nothing in two to Cooper Weiss. And down on strikes. Three pitches and a strikeout for Chris Stamos. Interesting watching Stamos. You see the pitch first. Fastball up and away. Great location. Arm side fastball tough to get to if you're wise. But you see him looking at his watch. So another thing we talked about a little while ago, Ike Irish was having earpiece problems. Radio. But this is the watch. So Tennessee, excuse me. Mike Irish swings at the first pitch over to first. It's the second baseman Moore who fields. And Samos covers the bag to beat Mike Irish 
in a foot race there. I think these guys have the earpiece and the watch, so they can choose from one or the other. But you see Stamos there using the watch. You see Ike Irish hustling. Almost a deke here by the first baseman. Kind of a reach out there for Burke. Get Moore's way, but a good play by him and a good job by the pitcher. We fairly back. rarely see a 4 1 put out yeah. in baseball, yeah, but we just no saw doubt. that. Yep. So I think Burke probably got called off last minute by Moore. Get out of the way, brother. I got <laughs> it. Here's Cooper McMurray. Sees this one low and away. Be a good feeling for Tennessee to make quick work of Auburn here in this eighth inning. Yeah, we have. We've had some good quick innings and good solid pitching since the third. Fouled back by McMurray. It's one and one. Isn't it funny how, how, it, how it happens? I mean, it, it's been as dominant pitching as it was dominant hitting, but it's been six innings of dominant pitching, and it's been two innings. It was two innings of dominant offense. To shut it down on the mound, both teams. Two and one, the count. Guy's having a great year. Hit nine home runs at Kansas, transferred over to Auburn in the portal last year, hit 14 bombs. And just off to another great year. Looking probably for another maybe 20 this year. He's at 11 already. McMurray now in his second season playing for Auburn. He takes a strike. It's two and two. Redshirt junior, so apparently two years at Kansas. Kansas must have redshirted one year, maybe with an injury. Who knows what he did, but two great years here at Auburn. He settled right in. He really hasn't had a, a bad learning curve settling into the pitching of this league. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Base is empty. And McMurray fouls this one back. Good stuff here by Stamos. He really looks good. Good long body. It's a, it's a smooth, easy rhythm. Fastball was 90 right there. Swing and a miss. McMurray is down on strikes. And that brings the eighth. Cannon Peebles will pinch hit left-handed bat. Coach Vitello using his bench, trying to get some something going here. Three more outs, and they go to five and five on the season. Peebles, Moore, and Burke are the three batters due up. We're some professional scouts here tonight. JJ, I hope they hung around. This guy right here, John Armstrong, can pitch in the big leagues. He's a specialty guy. You hear so much talk about scouts now they look for 95. Well, it's not 95, but it is just the hitters don't see it. They don't get good swings, good looks. It's complete. He's strong. This guy pitches in the big leagues. He finds a role, and he pitches a long time. Two and one, the count. Managers love these guys because they just, the quick innings, he's done it tonight. They throw strikes. They get you back in the dugout. Everybody wants to hit. This is a guy that allows you to hit. Found back, it's two and two. Man, that fourth run Auburn got there in the sixth inning. Cooper McMurray hitting that sack fly to center. Look, looked a little harmless, but it just gives such a cushion, such a comfort. Something about four runs, I don't know. Maybe it's me. The leadoff batter here in the ninth inning for Tennessee. Cannon Peebles down on strikes, caught looking. And it's the first out of the inning. Some of the better velocity we've seen. Watch this fastball explode, and look at where it is. I mean, there's just nothing you can do. 92, late life at the knees. Ike Iris went out there and stuck it. Christian Moore, the leadoff batter for Tennessee, takes a strike. It's nothing in one. As we said earlier tonight, Tennessee this season, 13-0 when they score in the first inning. Amazing, isn't it? On the verge of changing here tonight. Yeah, and that 13-0 probably is not against the SEC. You're on the road in the SEC with that 13-0, and that can be challenged. This Auburn team can hit. They've hit all four series. They, they didn't score a bunch against Arkansas. Those games are really close, 6-5, 1-0. But they've hit all year long, and they're going to hit if they can just settle in with some starting pitching. Tennessee averages over 10 runs a game. They've got just five runs tonight. I don't know that we've seen more than of, of John Armstrong's 45 pitches, maybe six off-speed pitches. Uh, maybe one a good time for a slider here, but some change-ups. But really, it's just been power. Here it is, hit it.
have to kind of play something in my eye when you get close to getting a strike called on you because you're using the clock. <laughs> Look at John Armstrong with that pitch breakdown, just yeah. throwing strikes. Yeah, and just fastball dominant too. Why not? This kind of fastball, let's go get it. There's the slider. That was nasty. Now look for that painting on the black. He did it a little while ago. He took a fastball and just painted the outside corner. Look for it right here. 91 on the black. See if he can keep Ike Irish. They call it throwing dime. See if he gets a dime right here. Hard hit ball to short. Cooper Weiss fields and throws over to first for the second out. That's the first chance tonight for Cooper yep. Weiss. The Auburn you know, shortstop's kind of bored. Yep. But gets a chance there, and now Tennessee is down to their last out. You don't really want to face Blake Burke anytime, but you don't mind facing him with two outs and a four-run lead in the top of the ninth inning. It's not quite as painful. Blake Burke is the last chance for the Volunteers. First pitch to Burke is a strike. Guarantee Tennessee hitters are going to go back to that guy and say, we don't want to see that guy again. Once is enough. And at 50 <laughs> pitches now, he probably has done it for the weekend, but he's done a heck of a job. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Tennessee now down to their last strike. Nasty slider. Got it down and in. See if he throws it again to the back foot to finish the game off. No balls and two strikes and two outs. Burke with the base hit the other way. The game will continue, and that's the first hit given up by John Armstrong coming on in relief. It's the only mistake, J.J. He really made him look bad on the 0-1 slider and then threw a fastball right down the middle to an All-American, and you just can't do that. And to Burke's credit, didn't try and do too much. Great approach, shot the ball the other way. So Reese Chapman bats with the runner on first and two outs here in the ninth. Not a fan there of that pitch call. And of course, the location has everything to do with it, but would have loved to see that, that good slider again, see if he can get a ground ball here. Ooh. Just missed. Wow. Just is the right word. <laughs> Chapman takes ball one. There's a strike. Auburn not holding Burke at first. No need to. You got a doubles threat with left-handed hitter, and you're up by four. So if he wants to steal the base, he can. Play back, get the out. Two outs in the ninth. Chapman fouls this one off, and once again, Tennessee is down to their last strike. Runner on first, one ball, two strikes, two outs here in the ninth inning. Auburn looking for their second win in SEC play this season. And we see one miss outside. A little too, too emotion, a little too emotional with a one-two slider, overthrew it, missed. Happens to all of us. This is where he's kind of been rearing back with the fastball, throwing it right by him tonight. And he did. Miss Armstrong with the massive strikeout to pick up the win. Thank you.